guys. Today I'll be showing you a complete tutorial for how to upgrade your MacBook Pro early or mid 2015 SSD storage. This is a complete tutorial. So I will be replacing the old SSD with the new one here. So mine here, the storage is only 256 gigabytes. And I will be replacing it with the new one from Orico. It's one terabyte. And the speed it claims here is up to 7,000 megabit per second. So what you need to successfully upgrade your SSD, of course, you need a new SSD. And when you buy this Oracle SSD, because this is a PCLE MVMe SSD, you need to buy extra adapter. It doesn't fit with the slot of the MacBook Pro. You need to buy extra adapter here, this one. And you will also need a bootable USB because when you replace the old MacBook Pro SSD with the new one, there's no macOS running. So you need to use a bootable USB because this one doesn't work with over the air installation. You need to manually upgrade it using bootable USB. If you don't know how to make a bootable USB, I have the link in the description. You can check it out how to make a bootable USB. And you may need to back up all the data from the previous SSD using Time Machine. So I back it up into this so that after I install Mac OS already, I will back it up all my applications and everything so that everything will be the same. It's just that now I get more storage. But if you don't want your old data or applications, you don't have to back it up. And you will need this screwdriver specifically for opening the back cover of your MacBook with some pry tool here. This one only for you to use it to detach the battery. So first thing first, you need to flip this over. Okay, now remove the cover. Right here, this is the MacBook SSD. But before we can do anything to this, you need to unplug the battery cable first so that there will be no short circuit if you attempt to remove this. Okay, like so. Now the battery is detached. There will be no electrical current running through this, so you're now safe to remove your SSD. So for Mac, you still need this pantalope screwdriver. Here's the screw. So to remove this, you have to gently lift it up and do like this. Like that. Now it's out. This is a 256 gigabytes of storage from Samsung. You'll be replacing it with this. You can see it doesn't fit. We have to put in the adapter. Make sure it's completely in and snug into place. This SSD comes with heatsink pads. So I'm not sure whether to install these heatsinks or not, but it will cool down the SSD. So I have to remove this to inside the heatsink. I mean, if you don't want this heatsink, you don't have to do that. Just plug this in, it will work. But it comes with free heatsink and I mean, on window, they, they will install this. They will not throw it away. But on Mac, I'm not sure whether to include it. So my final decision is to include the heatsink. Hopefully it will cool down my Mac SSD. So I'll only leave one heatsink at the top. So push it in all the way in, like so. Make sure this is all the way in. I think it's best if I remove the heatsink and put my Mac this way because when it becomes hot, the heatsink will fall off. It's best if I don't put it, it's gonna be messy. So we'll screw it back in. Now you're good to go. Now the SSD replacement is completed, but we still need to install the new Mac OS into this new SSD. So what we do next is we reattach the battery. And then we put the lid back. Remember this new SSD is not formatted yet. That's why you need the bootable USB to format it. So let me screw it back in first. Okay, now it's done. You need to turn it on and then press an option. So if it doesn't turn on like in my case, you need to plug in the charge. And turn it on again. 
press on option key make sure to plug in your bootable usb just like in my case i forget so let's just plug it in okay now you can see here so i'm trying to install mac os high sierra onto my macbook because this is the old macbook mid 2015 so i want the old mac os back because it runs faster so i click on this here Okay, now I just select the language. So first thing first, you need to go to this utility because you need to format it first. Click continue. Yeah, at the top you can see it says Oracle. So we need to erase and format it first. So what we select is the new Apple format system, which is called APFS. And the name we would put Macintosh. SSD and then I click on erase now it's done now we quit this now it's time to install Mac OS onto this new SSD because the Mac OS that I want to install is Mac OS High Sierra which is a very outdated Mac OS in the past when I tried to install it, Apple won't allow it. It would just say that the Mac OS is corrupted or something. So we'll try to click on install here. If it works, then we'll continue. But if it doesn't work, then there is one more step you need to do, which is to change the date so that we will be able to install the old Mac OS. Okay, now let's click on the word continue. Oh, it actually works. If it doesn't work, I have to change the date to the year when Mac OS High Sierra was released, which is in 2016. If you want to know how to change the date, please check the description below. I have linked to my other video for how to do that. Okay, now we click continue. Agree. Agree. Now it allows you to select which drive you want to install. And I have my new drive here, 1.02 terabyte. That's a new drive. Click here, click install and just wait for it to finish installation. So you want to start it from new, you can use don't transfer information now, but in my case, I wanted to back up from my external SD using Time Machine. I want to use all my previous application from the previous SSD so I will need to plug in my external SSD for time machine backup so we select the first option we continue and here it shows me the extreme SSD backup time machine and continue Okay, the backup has been completed. Let's wait for it to log in and I will show you the storage here. Okay, now we click on Apple logo about Mac and we click on storage. And you can see here, this is my newly installed SSD. It's one terabyte. And let's go to the speed test app to see what speed we get from this newly installed SSD. Based on Orico, it claims that this SSD will run at about 7000 megabit per second for read and 6500 megabit per second for write. We'll see if we can get to those speeds, but I highly doubt that we can get to that speed because first of all, we use an adapter for the SSD. We do not plug it directly to the SSD slot on the Mac. Second, this is an old MacBook, which means it has limitation for speed upgrade. So I don't think it will reach 7000 for read and 6500 for write. As suspected, we only get around 1400 megabit per seconds for read and write, which is about two times better than the built-in SSD. So I cannot reach the full speed of 7000 megabit per second for read and 6500 megabit per second for write, which is kind of a disappointment here. The reason why I bought this at the beginning is hopefully to get a lot better speed, but now it's only about twice faster than before. 
So if you were to buy an SSD, I recommend you to buy the other one I have included in the link in the description to buy from Amazon as well. But this one, you don't need to buy an extra adapter. You just plug in directly to the MacBook SSD slot. And the speed you will get is about 2000 megabit per second for read and about 1600 for write. It's not a lot better than this SSD, but you don't have to buy an extra adapter. So let's see how long it will last the performance of this new SSD, whether it goes faster or slower or it crash or something. The update will be in a future video. Okay, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what we do, please give us a thumbs up, comment down below and subscribe for more useful videos in the future. Have a great day guys. See you in the next video.